We're standing now in the Imperial War Museum's new exhibition, uh, Fashion on the Ration. Uh, and what this exhibition is looking at is, I guess, the home front as seen through the prism of clothing. Now, in the functional fashion area, we look at how fashion for civilians responds to the kind of challenges of wartime. So the siren suit for me is an incredible item because it reminds us of that daily grind of the threat of living under aerial bombing. And and yet fashion responds to that. This siren suit, the all-in-one, um, allows people to jump in, keep warm, but they're really quite pretty things as well. There's an attempt to make them very attractive. Luminous buttons, um, which are designed for use in the blackout. People are walking around in the dark, in pitch darkness in Britain's towns and cities, and there are a steady um, but steep rise in accidents and collisions between cars and pedestrians and pedestrians into each other. And again, retailers see this as an opportunity. And so luminous buttons um, or pin on flowers, luminous handbags, wearing something white, these are things people are encouraged to do by the government, but also retailers want to try and sell stuff to people. And they are, again, just more attractive solutions for a very practical wartime problem. Also, for example, the threat of gas attack sees people find more attractive solutions for carrying around their gas masks, which everybody in Britain was issued. These things are now kept in handbags. We then move on into rationing and make, do and mend. And in this section, we see how upon the introduction of clothes rationing in June 1941, this makes shopping for new clothes a very difficult and quite challenging uh, ordeal for people as they are forced to count their coupons and make hard choices about what to buy during the war. Now, people were issued initially with 66 clothing coupons and roughly speaking, that could buy you one new outfit a year. And so make, do and mend is the response to that as people are encouraged to take care of the clothes that they already have and to make new clothes and to learn sewing, to learn knitting. Quite unusual fabrics were used to create new clothes during the war. We have an underwear set that was made from RAF silk navigation maps um, and some of these maps were given to Countess Mountbatten um, and turned into an underwear set for her. We also, in the Make Do and Men section, look at wartime weddings. It was not often possible to wear white unless somebody handed down their wedding dress to you. For example, one dress in the exhibition was worn by the 15 different women. It was passed on continually to allow them all to enjoy it. We've got a bridesmaid's dress which has been made from surplus parachute silk material. The level of skill used in some of the Make Do and Mend items is quite remarkable. The utility clothing range was introduced in 1942 and that was a way for the government to try and make efficiencies in the way clothing was produced. But one of the most important parts of utility clothing was the fabric which was used for utility clothes. It had to be durable fabrics that would last. And I think it's just so surprising to see the colourful nature, the array of attractive clothing that was on, uh, on offer to people. But remember that this clothing as well was also under austerity regulations, which meant losing things like multiple pockets, pleating, buttons. The clothing was simplified, it was pared down. And so you can see that on these clothes, how minimalist they look. And that is actually the style that has endured in popularity today when we look at wartime clothing. I think the Second World War has had a profound uh, impact on fashion today. If we look at uh, the way vintage fashion is now so popular, the way that people still will go out to try and find 1940s clothing um, and from markets, from vintage stalls and to wear it themselves, it is testament to the quality, for example, of utility clothing, which was made during the war to last. And in fact, you can see now, if you are lucky enough to get up close to some of it, how good quality it truly is. Well, in the 1940s would have ever been looking ahead thinking are these clothes gonna last? But they certainly have. Mm -hmm.